for the best car, SUV, or truck, guess what? You're in luck. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier, we've got the right price. Frontier, we'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors, low overhead country. And we are pleased to have you be part of the uh, Low Overhead Frontier Motor Show today. Don Parker here. I am your official button pusher and phone answerer, welcoming you to this edition of Talk at 10 on News Talk 1370 WCOA, right here in Pensacola, right where Frontier Motors is located. Got a question about a car, a truck, or an SUV that you might want to buy or sell or trade? or just a car question in general, aim it toward us. Ivan Struck will be with us for the remainder of this half hour. 478-3116. Good morning, sir. Hey, Don. Thanks so much for the introduction. And again, this is a double-formatted show, which means that it's radio and TV. Like Don said, 1370 AM radio, the oldest talk radio station in Pensacola. And we've been doing this show, Don and I, for going on 21 years now. And we also have been videotaping this for about the last 20 years for our Blab TV subscribers, so it might be cable or satellite, but we welcome you to the show, and this is a show about the car business, not so much about Frontier Motors and what we do, a little bit of that, of course, um, but also what's going on in the industry, what's a good car, what's a bad car, if you're in the market to buy a car, and this is the advice show. So like Don said before, 478 478-3116, you can join us on the show, and I can give you my piece of advice as far as which car might be a car suitable for you, and also uh, as far as uh, pricing is concerned. So if you've got a car that you're thinking of buying or you're thinking of selling, that's where I come in. And we use a couple different formats that you cannot get on the Internet. Obviously, I've got the Internet in front of me. And if you Google used car values, you're going to find an Edmunds. You're going to find a Kelly Blue Book. Everybody's heard of that. And you're going to find an NEDA value. Now, the values that we use in the Pensacola area are from this little book that I'm holding up. It's an NADA guidebook, but it's not the same guidebook as you're going to find on the internet. Don't ask me why it's different. This is an official guidebook, and that is uh, what our bankers and our credit unions and a lot of our insurance companies in our area use. So this book is pretty important as far as giving you the bank value. Now, there's a difference between what a banker might tell you the value would be and between what a dealer is going to tell you the value. Not because a dealer is trying to rip you off or charge too much money, but because the book a lot of times is off. That's where we come in at Frontier Motors to tell you, is this NEDA guidebook high or is it low based on reality? And reality is what I can buy a car for at the auction and mark it up at a profit and then tell you what I can sell you a car like that for. So if I pull up my auction guides, and, of course, I always talk about the Mannheim auctions because we're lucky enough to have a Mannheim auction right here on W Street. And the Mannheim is the largest chain of auctions in the whole wide world. And uh, we are uh, lucky enough in our area, which I would consider uh, Florida and Georgia and uh, Mississippi um, uh, and Alabama to be our area. There are approximately uh, 12 or 14, 15, 13 or 14 auctions in our area. And they sell between twenty and 25,000 cars Every week, all that data gets compiled into the MMR. They call it MMR, which is Mannheim Market Report, and it tells me what, on average, a particular car is selling for. So if you've got a car like a 2016 Chevy Impala, and the book says it's worth $20,000, but they're selling at the auction for fifteen thousand dollars i would tell you the book is off because that's too high if i can buy it for fifteen thousand dollars at the auction even if i pay the shipping the auction fee the buyer's fee and a setup fee to get ready for the lot and make a profit i should be able to sell that vehicle somewhere between 17 and eighteen thousand dollars and still make a profit therefore if you use the banker's edition you'd be paying between two and $3,000 too much. And that's why you call Frontier Motors or stop in at Frontier Motors, and we will give you our selling price on a particular vehicle, whether we have that vehicle in stock or not. So what I do is I get into my inventory to see what I have available. If I don't have the particular car you're looking for available, I will go into the auction ports and say, okay, here's the supposed. Suppose that I can get this car for you for seventeen to eighteen thousand dollars is a two thousand sixteen Chevy Pala LT with leather interior with less than twenty thousand miles on it, and it has to pass your condition report. So if your neighbor's selling that car and they're asking twenty thousand, because that's what the banker said it's worth, you can use my figure to maybe go back to your neighbor and say, "Hey, Frontier Motors can sell me this car for around seventeen to eighteen. So unless you come down to that price, I'm out." 
and I've helped hundreds and hundreds of people get better deals at car dealerships or private individuals just from calling us first for the free advice. Now, sometimes what happens is if you aren't able to get the person that you're buying that car from to drop their price, you drop them and you buy from us. Let me turn this phone off. Yeah. And, you buy, and you buy from us. I hate these phones when you... I put it on silent, Don, but it doesn't care. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll put it on silent. And by the way, when I'm talking about a smartphone, the cool thing about it, if I got these books right here that I hold up, uh, Don, here's an NEDA right. guidebook. And what, what's the date on that one, I uh, wonder? This book is uh, dated um, uh, two, December 15. Yeah, the well, last time you were yeah. getting them. This one here, the Black Wholesale Guidebook. I right. always hold this up for aesthetics in the uh, for the for the yeah. TV uh, audience. This is dated October 1st. 2014. Yeah. That's the last time I had this beat book. Up looking too. Yeah. The last time, but I use this book because these books are now on the phone, mm-hmm. you know? So I've got, what I do when I appraise you, a car, you subscribe, you pay money to subscribe. Oh yeah. To Just like services. when I bought these books, yeah, I, sure. it's actually a little bit cheaper to get it on the internet than it is right here. Generally but, the ni- is, yeah. but the nice thing about it is I don't have to carry this book around cause I always have my phone with me and I've got a little thing called inventory plus, And then that's got a scanner bar to it. So when you bring your car in the front of your motors, all of our appraisers have the scanner bar. So I scan the ID number and I can do this over the phone, by the way, you can give me the ID number. I can do the same thing, but I scan the ID number and instantaneously that ID number goes into our system and it does a couple different things. Number one, uh, it tells me the history report of the car and the history of the car. And a lot of people don't know the history of their car. They might have bought it secondhand. They might have never even looked. They might have had the car so long before their Carfax reports and before their auto checks. You know, 20 years ago, they didn't have Carfax and auto checks. So if you've got a car that you bought 20 years ago, you wouldn't have any clue what the history is. So that's what we do. We put that ID number in there and for no charge, we give you the history report of the car that you give me the ID number to. Now, it might be a car that's for sale uh, from your neighbor. I was using a neighbor, for example, because you don't want to make them look that bad. But the neighbor says, oh, yeah, I bought the car brand new. There's no issues. But you pull it up on the Carfax report, and it says back uh, uh, six months ago, the car was in a major accident, and the airbags were deployed, and the vehicle had to be towed. So what does that do to the value of the car? And the guy's asking $20,000, which happens to be full retail, on the NEDA guidebook, well, you got two things. Number one, I already told you I can get you that car without an accident at the auction for between seventeen and eighteen thousand. That's the first issue. Number two, I can get you that car without having been in uh, in an accident for between seventeen and eighteen. So, what does a major accident do to the value of the car? It's an opinion. There's no rhyme or reason. There's no percentage. But my opinion is somewhere between two and three thousand dollars is going to be the diminished value of that car, which, by the way, if you get in an accident, and it's a major accident, and somebody else harms you, I can give you a letter of that diminished value so you can go back to the insurance company and ask them for extra money because if you decide to trade that car after it was repaired, it's going to be worth less, and it just makes sense. Folks, if you're stopping in any dealership and you're looking at a particular car, especially if it's a newer type car, a 16 or even a 15, 000, a 15 model, a 16 or 17, and you find out it's been in a major accident, what does that do to your attitude about buying that car? Usually it puts it in the gutter. You're pretty much done. Or if you're savvy, you get the car inspected, you make sure the vehicle was fixed properly with the proper parts, and then you make a low offer. Because that's what I do. We don't go out and buy cars that have been a major wreck, but we do take them in trade. So if you've got a car that's been in an accident, what I'm telling you is I'll have no problem taking that car in trade. Obviously, that's what our livelihood is, but I'm going to tell you the appraisal is going to be lower because I'm going to disclose it to the next owner, and the only way that I'm going to be able to convince someone to buy that car is it's got to be a really good deal. One of my friends uh, called me about seven years ago, and he says, I, I need you uh, uh, to appraise a car for me. And I, he told me it was an older Grand Am. And I said, well, what do you do? He said, well, you know, I'm not sure what's going to happen. The, uh, the motor blew up on the car and I'm not sure if I should fix it or if I should, uh, if I should um, just junk it. And get, I said, so I did the history report when he called me because I wanted to find out what it said. And it was a salvaged title. And I said, I called him up. I said, Steve, I said, you know, this car had been salvaged, which mean major accident. And uh, the, the insurance company totaled it. They probably sold it to a body shop that fixed it up and sold it to my buddy, Steve. So he says, yeah, I know the guy told me it was a sell. I said, well, why'd you buy it? He said, I bought it for about half price. 
What I'm getting at is that there's always a buyer for every car. And you know what? This car has been a good car for him. I think he rode, he drove that car for seven years before the motor finally blew up on it. And he probably paid like $2,500 yeah. for a five or $6,000 car. So again, I'm not telling you not to buy the car. I'm just saying, get the vehicle inspected and make sure you get a good deal. Now, how do you know if you're getting a good deal? You call Frontier Motors Ask for one of our sales managers that appraise these cars all day long, and we will give you our opinion as far as what you should pay for that car where it's good enough of a deal. And I'm talking about a car that has some issues. I had this happen once in a while, Don, and this is a, a lot of people don't even understand that there's a, such a thing as a manufacturer's repurchase. Do you know what that is, Don? I do not. That is a lemon law buyback. And when you hear the, law, the, the, the word lemon law, you're like, what do you want to do? I don't want to buy that car. It's a darn lemon. Right. Well, you know, they've got these rules about lemons and, and what constitutes a lemon. And a lot of people don't know this, but if you can't fix a car in 30 days, it becomes a lemon. If you can't get a car repaired three times for the same problem, it becomes a lemon, and you can ask the manufacturer to help repurchase the car. It still costs you money, but you might be done with the car. Now, there are times, and I remember when I was a new car dealership, twenty a new car dealer 20 years ago, that... We had to order parts for a particular car, but if that those parts didn't make it within 30 days, that guy could ask for his money back because he was without a car for pretty much 30 days. And back then, they didn't give you loaner cars. They had to rent a car. And right. You can imagine how upset a customer was when he bought a brand new car thinking that, hey, I'm buying brand new. I'm not going to have any issues. And the car breaks down. He can't drive it. And you can't get parts for it because they're on back order for whatever reason. That makes it a lemon. And every once in a while, I get a customer call me and say, hey, I found a car. And this happened with a Cadillac about two years ago. I found a better deal than yours. And it's over mobile at, the, at, the, at a used car lot. And uh, So I found out which lot it was. And I did the history report. And it said lemon law buyback. Wow. And I said, you know, the reason that car is $4,000 less, it was because of the lemon. You know what the guy says? I don't care. Oh, well, you're the first one that doesn't care because everybody I always talk to, they always uh, worry about, well, is it a lemon or is it an ex-lemon? And a lot of these cars that are sold like that, there's a lane in, in Orlando that all they do is run lemons. Mm -hmm. We've got like 37 or 38 lanes down there. One lane from morning to night runs lemon law buybacks. Right. They're all disclosed. And you know what? The dealers are buying them like crazy. You know why they're buying them like crazy? Because they're really good deals. Yeah. And sometimes they'll actually tell you what the problem was. It could be something as simple as an a water leak. The, maybe the sunroof leaks a little bit. And they couldn't get it fixed. They couldn't get it fixed in three times or they couldn't get it fixed in 30 days. Well, now guess what? They finally got the new molding. They got it caulked properly. It's all fixed, but it has to be disclosed. So those cars become a bargain. Again, I'm getting off tangent a little bit, but the reason I'm telling you is that all these things that I'm talking about, you need a professional to give you advice on whether the, to pursue that particular car or not. A lot of times I'll tell you no, and a lot of times I'll tell you yes. And if you find a car at a dealership, last time I checked, and Don and I, we do this every once a month, is uh, how many dealers are there in Pensacola? I forget right now. I think the last time I counted was like 120 dealers. Yeah, something like that. I remember. There was, yeah, 23 new car dealerships and like 102 used car dealerships. So like 120 or 130 dealers. Folks, there's a lot of dealers out there. That means there's a lot of cars out there. We realize that Frontier Motors is not the only game in town. We are actually the largest independent dealer in the South. We have almost 400 cars in inventory, and we sell pr approximately 200 to 250 cars every month. So we're a very large, small dealership. What I mean by small is that we don't have a mausoleum. We don't have a showroom. Uh, we're on um, a small, smaller lot. It's about uh, a little less than five acres outside of Car City by about uh, two blocks. We bought, we bought our place 21 years ago for $105,000. And one of the reasons that I bring that up all the time is because you can imagine what a mausoleum costs and what an overhead oh, yeah. of a mausoleum. So I always use that. And don't get me wrong. I wish I had a mausoleum, but I wish I would get one for free. Yeah, Because I would love, love to have a beautiful Without indoor showroom yeah. where I don't get rained on. I can put all my used cars in stock. But guess what? You don't get that for free. You pay for it. All those glass windows that you see, guess what it calls the cost to heat and cool? Just that alone as far as the overhead, not to mention the price to put it up and not to mention the taxes and the insurance and the maintenance. All that goes into the overhead of when you sell a car and you have to sell an awful lot of cars to pay for that building. And sometimes they don't sell enough cars. So therefore the amount of money on these, some of these overhead dealerships, the amount of money you have to make is a lot compared to a small, what I consider 
uh, one of the guys up uh, in car study called uh, years ago called us a dirt lot because we have gravel in the back. We have asphalt. <laughs> yeah. We have asphalt in the front, but in the back where some about a couple hundred cars are. That that that's a gravel. I lot. I don't think it was so a compliment. It wasn't. They said, "Yeah, that you're talking about buying from that dirt lot over uh, on uh, yeah. on uh, uh, Beverly Parkway." And they said, "Yes, that's exactly what I'm talking about because they're nicer, they have cleaner cars, and they do business the old-fashioned way. They give me and a I price." I don't hear and you insulting them. I don't. I, you you know, don't. We talk about overhead, but you'll never ever talk hear me talk about any single dealer unless it's a good thing. I was talking about, for example, if you're going to buy a Chevrolet, there's two Chevy dealers in, st- in town. You got Pete Moore and you got Sandy Stansing. And obviously, if you're going to buy brand new, I would urge you to go to one of those two dealerships because we want you to keep the money in town. So I don't say anything bad about that. All I say is that I am the alternative to new. So mm-hmm. if you're going to go and buy a Ford over at World Ford, Get a price from them on a 17 F-150. Come to Frontier Motors, take a look at our 17 model or our 16 model, and let's see how much money I can save you. And if I can only save you a couple of thousand dollars, I'm the first one to tell you, go buy it from World Ford. But what if I could save you six or seven thousand dollars? Wouldn't that be enough to convince you to buy one that maybe has six thousand, seven thousand, or ten thousand miles on it? So sometimes you say yes, and sometimes you say no. The Lexus dealership, they're going to tell you why Lexus is the greatest thing ever since sliced bed because they, they've been the number one rated car for years and years. And now Audi's moved to town and you got a new Audi dealership and they're going to pull out the, the 2017 Consumers Reports that says Audi, for the first time ever, just beat Lexus to be the best car ever. Now you're completely confused. At Frontier Motors, we sell every one of those cars. We've got the Audi, the Lexus, the BMW, the Mini. They're all lined up there. And you can go to one dealership and test drive every single one. Instead of going to four different dealerships, meeting four different salesmen, and having the so, the squeeze put on you, so to speak, at four different car lots, getting you to try to buy a car the first time there, while you're still just in the information gathering stage. What I like to talk about, other than what I'm going to get into, uh, what we specialize in, I like to talk about that when you come to Frontier Motors, you don't have to be sold a car. And our, P, our customers really love that fact that they can come in, they can look at every make and model, and they can pick one out, the one they like the best. And we also get a little bit of feedback from our customers as far as when we talk about on this radio slash TV show, how we do business. I want to make sure that what I talk about on the radio and TV show really happens when we come on the, uh, on the car lot. And uh, we survey our customers every month when we uh, when they come in, we serve them and ask them uh, for feedback on how they were treated. I brought a couple of examples along today, and Don, maybe you can uh, 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 talk about a couple of those. Yeah, I'm going to read some of the, these are uh, email comments that uh, Ivan has downloaded here. Uh, this is from Ricky. He says, my car buying experience at Frontier Motors was fantastic. No high pressure sales, just a dealer who genuinely cares about selling you a high quality vehicle at an affordable price. Frontier, you now have a customer for life. Nice. Let's see. How about this one from Jackie? This was by far the best car buying experience I've ever had. I've been bragging on you guys nonstop since I bought my Mm -hmm. SUV. RJ, I assume that's one of your salespeople. Mm -hmm. RJ was awesome. Okay. Um, Phyllis said, uh, Corey, Corey Wilkes, I guess, huh? Uh, Corey, this is the first time I've ever felt comfortable buying a vehicle from a dealer. I've purchased many cars over the years, uh, and at Frontier Motors, it just felt so laid back. Very professional. The sales staff didn't swarm on us like vultures honing in on the kill. (laughs) On other occasions, it would take hours and hours to seal the deal, but we were in and out of Frontier Motors in about one and a half hours. Love the Ford Focus. Uh, this is from Gary and Phyllis. Yeah, and thanks, Don. And we, uh, we, I love the feedback, obviously, and I love bad feedback and good feedback. You know, one of the people say you love bad feedback. Well, I do want to know if we screw up because how are you going to fix something unless you know about it? So if any of the customers that are watching or listening to the show ever come to Frontier Motors and they're not treated professionally and treated with courtesy and also not uh, forced into a buying decision uh, I- immediately. That's what we specialize in. I tell people on the air that you can buy a car whenever you're ready. We're always ready. We get up in the morning, we want to sell cars for a living, but we're not going to do it where it's intimidating, where it's one of these, well, if I do this, will you buy it right now? Well, what if I throw this in, will you buy it right now? We don't like doing that. We like giving people a fair deal on a really good product. And if we don't have the best price in town, it's going to be the best car, the lowest miles, the highest content of equipment, 
in the best condition. And that's really what sets us apart. When I buy a car at the auction, for example, the auction rates the cars from zero to five. If they're not a 4.5 or higher, I don't even look at the car. A lot of dealers on purpose will buy an average car because they can buy it cheaper and they can sell it cheaper. So sometimes it gets a little confused when you look at the internet and you might see a car that is $700 cheaper than another dealer. Well, well, you better go look at both of them because I'll bet you that the one that is $700 more, a lot of times is worth $700 more. And even if they have the same miles on it, what if it was a five owner car smoked in two accidents? Wouldn't that make a difference? And that's one of the problems I have when you call the banker and they give you this NED guidebook and then all of a sudden you're armed with this ammunition. Let's use the Impala, for example, that I booked out at $20,000 because that's what the banker said it's worth. Number one, that's way too much. I can sell you that car for $18,000. But number two, wouldn't be important. wouldn't it be important what color that car is? Wouldn't it be important how many owners it had? Wouldn't it be important if it was serviced or not serviced, especially if you have proof of it being serviced on a regular basis? That would be important to me. It also would be important if it's been in three accidents versus no accidents. Um, it also would be important if it's got dings and scrapes and scratches on it. It also would be important on how the car drives down the road. Does it have, does it have rattles and air leaks and things like that? And you know what? The banker doesn't ask any of those things. They just look in the book and say it's $20,000. So I urge you to get a second opinion from Frontier Motors and don't tell us. If you find a car somewhere, don't tell us what they want for it. Don't cloud us. We don't want to tell you it's a bad deal. Buy from us. That's not what this is about. If it's a good deal, we're going to tell you because we know if we help you get a good deal somewhere else, you're going to recommend us because we're the ones that helped you get the deal. And we know that's not the only car you're ever going to buy. So if you buy a car today and I tell you it's a good deal, I might get your business the next time. And it might be two years away. It might be 10 years away. And Don, there's so often that one of your uh, listeners comes in and says, I've been listening to COA radio for years and years. Mm -hmm. And I never thought I was going to need you guys this early. But guess what? I need you guys. He says, and, I, and you guys keep talking about how you do things. And I wanted to come in just to see if you really do what you talk about on your radio and TV show. And I'm here because of the radio and TV show. And now that's when our salespeople and our managers that work for us, we are up to almost 30 employees. I have to make sure that they do what I talk about. What happens at a lot of these big dealerships is the owners aren't on the show floor. The owners are doing the commercials, but they're not there monitoring what's going on because every dealer wants their customers to be taken care of. Every dealer talks about customer satisfaction after the sale. They talk about service after the sale. They talk about all that stuff. The problem is they're not there to monitor it. Well, I'm still there to monitor it. And if I'm not there, I have a general manager and a sales manager that's there to monitor to make sure what I talk about here actually happens on the car lot. And that's why I want your feedback to let me know that if it doesn't happen, the way we talk about on this radio show, which is a laid back approach to selling cars, if you hate buying a car, Frontier Motors is a great place to shop because we're going to give you the price so that you're going to be able to drive the car. N number one, we unlock every car every morning. So if you want to sit in 15 different cars, we don't have to get 15 sets of keys. You just slip from one to the other to the other. Our salesperson can give you a list which has the asking price and the discounted sale price. Discounted sale price. That's on the internet. The internet has to be very competitive. We have to be very competitive because everybody puts their cars on the internet. So I'm not going to give you a bad price when I put it on the internet. If there's any other thing that I can do to drop the price, I'm going to do it right then and there, and then I'm going to put it in writing. I'm going to actually give you the complete price with all the fees. You have to be real careful when you go to different dealers, folks, because there's a dealer that I know of in Car City that will give you a good sales price, but then they charge a $900 fee. Well, that makes it a not a good price anymore. And I don't care if they charge a $900 fee. I don't, I don't, even get, I don't get mad at them. The state said you can charge whatever you want as a fee, as a dock fee or a get ready fee or a, a tax or whatever, as long as you charge everybody the same. But let's compare apples to apples and let's put the car side by side. Let's say if I've got a car and it's $22,000 out the door and you have another dealership that's $22,000 out the door, hypothetically, let's say they're the same price. But my car's got 7,000 less miles on it, has navigation and a sunroof and a backup camera and there doesn't. Boom, I got a better deal. Let's say that the equipment is exactly the same and the miles are exactly the same. And I've got a pearl white one with tan interior, but you're looking at a pink one with a purple interior. I think that I would have a better deal because that car is going to be really hard to sell, even though you might like pink and purple. The other thing is, let's say that everything's the same. The 
miles are the same, the color is the same, and the equipment is the same, and the price is the same. But mine's flawless. There's not a nick or a scratch on it. It smells like a brand new car. It's got brand new tires on, and theirs is just average. Who's got the better deal? I didn't beat their price, but I've got the better deal. And that's what it's really all about. And then we put that price in writing. We say, hey, if you're not ready, why don't you go shop? We've got a program called Price Driver that tells me every single car that's available in our area like the one I have. And I'd look at that before I give you the price because I don't want to be embarrassed. I want to give you a price that you'll come back to four or five days later after you've done your rounds to look at everything. And that's how really how we sell cars. And that's really what it's all about. Now, other one other thing is they're telling me I've only got three minutes left. I want to let you know that our inventory is lower than it should be. I mentioned before we stock about 400 cars. That's what we stock. But we're at about 350 right now. So I'm about 50 cars short. So folks, don't put a car on Craigslist or eBay or Auto Trader. Bring it to Frontier Motors. You're going to be pleasantly surprised that I will give you more than wholesale. Maybe not retail, but quite a bit more than wholesale and quite a bit more than most other dealerships because we don't specialize in any car. We specialize in all different cars. So when you bring us your car, you know, if you take a, if you take a, a pickup truck to a Lexus dealership, they might say we advertise, we buy cars, but they're not going to give you prime dollars for that car. They don't have any clientele buying pickup trucks. We have somebody buying everything. So please give us a chance to buy your car from you. And you don't have to buy a car to make that happen. We'll also appraise your car if you're going to buy a brand new car to make sure that uh, they give you the right, the right dollar amount for that car. Sometimes I'll just write you a check and you can go buy your brand new car if I can't talk you out of buying. I got a, I got a Mitsubishi Outlander with 26 miles, a Cadillac, CT6 with eleven uh, with 110 miles, a Ford Transit Connect with 300 miles. So we have a lot of cars with very low miles. YouTube, this this ugly mug of mine is going to be on YouTube in a couple days. So if you just Google Frontier Motors, you're going to see me. Uh, if you don't have Blab TV or whatever, you can watch this on uh, on your uh, uh, video screen. We also have a great Facebook page. So if you want to just Google Frontier Motors Facebook. Uh, or just put Facebook in Frontier Motors and like us on there so you become a friend of ours. A lot of our newer cars, and if we take motorcycles and trade or boats and trade or anything like that, we'll put them on our uh, YouTube. I mean, we'll put them on, well, both. We'll put them on YouTube and we'll put them on our Facebook. And then, of course, if you Google Frontier Motors, you're going to see that we have right now 347 cars in stock, 31 detailed photographs. They all have pricing on it. But I want to really let you know that we are the home of free advice when you're in the car market. So any questions how to buy a car, how to sell a car, which car is a good car, bad car, our experience with a certain amount of car, a certain year of car. Um, we've got all the knowledge that's going to help you make sure that your next car purchase is going to be a great purchase and that you're not going to be taken care uh, advantage of when you buy that car because you'll have the ammunition in your back pocket from Frontier Motors saying this is what you should pay and this is what a good deal would be. And hopefully by doing that, the next time around, you're going to give Frontier Motors a shot at your business. And that's really all we can ask. So thanks for listening and thanks for watching. Have a great day. Auf Wiedersehen. Frontier Motors is down the street. Got the best deals that can't be beat. Don't overpay. Come in today. Doing business the old-fashioned way. Frontier. We've got the right price. Frontier. We'll treat you mighty nice. Frontier Motors. Low overhead. Frontier.